Hello, this is Tracy, also known as Hot Nerd Girl, and I'm sitting here with Rod Roddenberry. She's like really hot. <laughs> And I mean, I don't know how much of a nerd, but definitely really hot. Uh, huge nerd. Yeah? Nerd okay. first. Nerd first. Even though it says hot nerd girl. It should be nerd hot girl. Yeah. All right. <laughs> All right. Okay. So I'm going to ask him a few questions. Okay. I first saw you at a convention in 2002, 10 years ago. I think you had a shaved head uh, had thing the shaved, going on. Yeah, I, had I think the you thing. even had a dog with you on stage. Did I? Oh, I, was it a, 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 yeah, there was a lady who would bring a dog to conventions, a, a service dog, and she'd train them for other people, and this was part of the training, and she knows I love dogs, um, and so she let me have the dog on stage, Aww. and I have two dogs of my own. I'd bring them here if I could. It was really sweet. Yeah. Anyway, I, I just remember that. That's awesome. Okay, so before we even begin, let me say bravo. For the oh, film, thank you. I love it. Thank you very much. Um, I, I'm hoping, I'm really glad actually, seeing that panel that you are doing other projects that are not Star Trek related. Because that was one of my questions: was if you're doing anything else Star Trek related. So yeah. you answered it already. Good. good. Um, the fans against the black screen in Trek Nation, I think, is one of the most brilliant and beautiful montages. Oh, oh, yeah, absolutely. With the ones in costume that yeah. kind of have the the effect and the slow camera in and out. Yeah, was um, that your idea? No, no, Scott Calthorpe, the uh, director. Um, he's he's really uh, creative and phenomenal with the camera, and, and really, um, he's great at setting a mood for a scene or setting a mood for a discussion. He's he's just phenomenal at that. Awesome. Yeah. So, and I know that you're really into um, helping the environment, especially the oceans. Yeah. And you're a big scuba diver. Absolutely. Here in San Diego, right? I am, I am. I love it here. So where where is your favorite spot to go scuba diving? Well, in the world? In the world. Oh, I, I, I'm a, a micro Micronesia fan. I mean, I, I kind of say, I call it the South Pacific, but it's anything between Hawaii and Australia, including Hawaii and Australia. I mean, all the oceans there, all the islands, all the cultures are just beautiful and phenomenal. The crystal clear water? Yeah, I, if you find the right place, yeah. Yeah, you can have uh, many hundreds of feet of visibility. And, you know, it's... it's it's real exploration, you know? And obviously I, I, I play off the theme of Star Trek, but it's true, it's, I, I'm going where very few people have gone before. I'm exploring strange new worlds, and I'm seeing real aliens. I mean, they're, when you see these creatures underwater, they are aliens, so uh, I, I just have a passion for that. It's amazing how many species we have yet to discover yeah, as well. Yeah, absolutely, absolutely. You may have discovered one, you didn't even know it. Yeah, I don't, yeah. They're, they're getting smaller and smaller and smaller, but yeah. Okay, so, where was the last place you went scuba diving? Well, I, I just got back from Micronesia. Oh, okay. I was in uh, Palau, Guam, and, uh, and Yap. Guam, it's beautiful yeah, water. It is, it really is. Uh, we were just in Palau, and uh, it was actually my, my wife's uh, reunion for her high school. She, she went to high school on Guam. Is she a Navy brat? She is not, she is oh. not. Her father uh, was sort of a... a, 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 a solver of businesses. Anytime oh, okay. there was a business collapsing or that needed, I guess, uh, saving, he would go and he would restructure the company. Oh, cool. So he was uh, quite a, a talented man in that area. Excellent. So you, and you started the Center for Stem Cell Biology. How is that going? Well, so the Roddenberry Foundation, which is still a very young foundation, um, it's definitely where my passion and where my heart is. We started in 2010. And we essentially have, uh, I'm sorry, I'm giving you a little background on it. Absolutely, so, please do. Um, but we have four main focuses. We call them pillars. It's uh, science and technology, education, the environment, and humanitarian advances. And these, these really encompass pretty much everything on Earth, and they all overlap. But uh, the, the first large contribution we made was to the Gladstone Institute in San Francisco. And they are really on the cutting edge of stem cell research. It, our, our focus is to not to... Uh, put band-aids, band-aid solutions on problems, but long-term solutions to humanity's greatest issues. And so we look for innovative, cutting-edge organizations while we're really working in that direction. And Gladstone is doing amazing things. Um, what, one of the things that kind of got me interested was when I was there and taking a tour and learning about them, I didn't know anything about stem cells. And, you know, everyone has heard of the embryonic stem cell, which is very controversial. And, you know, despite how you feel, it's kind of a sticky area to get into. But uh, Gladstone was one of the institutions that founded the pluripotent stem cell, which is, this is amazing. What they can do is they can take 
a, a, an adult male or female skin cell, they reverse engineer it into a stem cell, and then they, they program those cells to become heart, liver, brain, any organ in the human body. And what, they, what I saw was through a microscope, I saw a sheet of beating heart cells that had come from a skin no cell. Way. Yeah. Wow. So I mean, it's this is real. This is science fiction, but it's not. It's reality. So what they're trying to do now is is uh, uh, engineer these things, in theory, into organs. And uh, I mean, that's still some years away, obviously. Um, but the latest breakthrough that they just did. Sorry to no, ramble. You can on. cut this, you know, and all that. But um, the, the latest thing they just did is. Uh, they, they were able to find, they were able to uh, repair damaged heart cells. So within uh, a living organism that had damaged heart cells, they went in, I don't know how, I'm not a scientist, but they went in and injected whatever they inject into it, and the damaged heart cells regenerate, not all of them, but they had success regenerating damaged heart cells. So the, the implication here is brain disease, heart disease, lung disease, they will be able to go in, inject whatever they inject, and the damaged tissue will regenerate itself. Solve the organ donor crisis. Yeah, I mean, isn't that amazing? So that's that's those are the things that we want to contribute, invest in, and, and further. So how, how does it feel to know that your father inspired all these people to do all these amazing things? Uh, you know, I, I used to think many years ago that the, the burden of living in my father's shadow was like tough. It is not. The minute I embraced it, which was many years ago, um, it's, it's uh, I, I'm not religious, but I, I'll use the word, it was a blessing. Mm -hmm. to, to have the Roddenberry name and to have a name that has inspired so many people to want to live in the future that he projected, um, it's, it's, it's the greatest thing on earth. I mean, it really is. I am so fortunate. I think so. Yeah, yeah, no, I'm, I really am. So. You mentioned, uh, when I saw your your screening in Los Angeles for Trek Nation, you mentioned that there was 10 years of footage and only about 5% of it had been used. Yeah. Now, I see that the DVD has come out now. How much of that 95% of unused footage made it to the DVD? And is there anywhere else we can see it? We, we, we really wanted to get the DVD out for Comic-Con because Science Channel and Discovery were phenomenal by letting us, you know, get it out on, on their channel. But it, it's it's still a, a limited run to get to get out, that out to people. So we really wanted to get the DVD out. So we certainly, I wouldn't say we rushed it at all. We just want to make an, an, uh, an amazing deluxe DVD. And and we couldn't do what we wanted to do in the short amount of time before Comic Con. So this this is the movie and commentary, and it's really just to get it out to everyone who hasn't seen it. Uh, between now and next year, we will be creating a phenomenal uh, deluxe DVD uh, that has all the interviews uh, with George Lucas, Seth MacFarlane, uh, Stan Lee. Um, they said so many amazing things uh, about my father and Star Trek that really gen genuinely helped me on my journey uh, that I want to share them with, with everyone. So sadly, I have to ask everyone to wait, but it, I, I hope it's worth it. I think it will be. And what do you feel is the most important lesson that you took away from those 10 years of footage? I, I'm glad you asked that, because uh, uh, someone asked that to me a little while ago, and it, and it, it, it made me think. Um, and I had a couple different answers, but the, the most important one, uh, during this journey that I, that I really went on, I went through many uh, emotions in, in figuring out who my father was and trying to connect with his love. And, uh, I, I found out that my father kind of had two lives. You know, my father had his home life, and he had his Star Trek life, and I kind of say that in the documentary. And I, I went through these uh, feelings of jealousy, and like, wow, I didn't even get my father. You know, he, so many people told me, when your dad died, it was like my dad died. And I there cried. was really, yeah, it was really, it, it really um, it bothered me back then. You know, I felt really jealous. And then uh, I, I thought about it. And I realized at the end of this that all these people who loved my father, all these people who said it was like a father to them, uh, they all really became my family because they're the ones that I spoke to. They're the ones who taught me about Star Trek, who taught me about my father, who shared their lives with me. Uh, that those are my brothers and sisters. 
not many people get to know their parents through the eyes of so many other people no, who no. love them. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So that, that's what I, I learned. Um, I have millions of, of wonderful brothers and sisters out there who all share a common vision of the future with me. Yeah. yeah. So amazing. And, and your mom, I mean, as, as far as I remember, because I grew up literally watching Star Trek from day one, the original series, right. starting with the cage, and your mom being the first female first officer yep. that I had yeah, ever yeah. seen. And really, I mean, we've got Kira Norris on Deep Space Nine, but she's not Starfleet. So yeah. she's really the only Starfleet first officer that we've seen. So for me, it was really, I, I wish I could have met your mom. Oh, uh, I wish you could have too. She would have loved you. She was such a, a wonderful, strong woman. I, I could tell you other stories. I, I'll tell you, you, you didn't ask the question, but I'll bring it up anyways. Absolutely. Because one of the hardest parts of this documentary was many of the earlier cuts, we, we, we added in uh, stories on my mom, like trying to involve her, I hate calling her character, but trying to involve her in the documentary as one of the people I would learn a great deal from. And people have asked me, why isn't that in there? You know, you, you have one interview with her and you say she didn't tell you anything and then you never talk about her again. The reason why we didn't bring her in more was not out of disrespect, was every cut that we brought her into people are like, how can you just mention this? There's, there, she needs her own documentary. I'm not saying I'm doing that, I just, it, it opened up such a can of worms because she was such a wonderful uh, person and such a complex person, just like my father. It was just too hard to touch on her a little. So I would love it if you made a yeah. second film. <laughs> has my yeah, vote. Yeah, <laughs> thank you, thank you all. Uh, and all their wedding sure. picture is the, my favorite wedding picture ever. Yeah. The Shinto Buddhist ceremony. Married in Japan. Full Japanese garb. Yeah. It's uh, pretty awesome. You got me going, I can talk forever, but I'll, 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 I'll let you ask the questions. Okay, so I'm actually going to, I, I asked some of my fans to submit some questions. Oh, good. So, so I'm, I'm gonna ask some of those. Good, good, good. Okay. Oh, and I wanna tell you one. Sure. Uh, kind of secret exclusive afterwards. I'm making it sound bigger than it is, but it technically is a secret exclusive. Okay. Well, first of all, a lot of them asked questions about future Star Trek shows, future Star Trek movies. Do you have any kind of influence in that sphere? Are you involved with it? Or is that all just paramount? I can only be honest and say no. Um, you know, when someone's in Hollywood and they, they get their, their show or their concept made by a studio, usually the studio gets full ownership of it. And the person retains some creative control and of course gets paid. So that was the same deal my father made. And over the years that deal evolved, evolved, evolved. And unfortunately, any sort of creative control died with them. Uh, Paramount and CBS own all of Star Trek. Uh, but I, I got the better deal because I have Rodney Bay. So, uh, but J.J. Abrams and uh, the, two, the writers, uh, Roberto Orsi and Alex Kurtzman, they have been so kind to us, uh, so kind to me. They're fans, they have tremendous respect for my father, my family, and of course the people out there, the fans. So they've, they've, uh, they've, they've had a dialogue with us and they've been very open and sharing. So did so. they reach out to you? They reached out to me in the sense that they said, you're welcome to read the script, you're oh. welcome to come to the stage, you know, just let us know what you want. Oh, that was and so really I've nice tried not that. to take too much advantage of it. And I won't say what I have or haven't done, or what NDAs I've signed, but... Uh, uh, I feel like that's really rare in Hollywood, so that's really nice of them to involve you. It's the first time it's happened. Wow, uh, no kidding. Yeah, so their team is very special. That's wonderful. I'm glad to hear that. Yeah. And... Some, Jason wanted to know if you've ever been in any of the Star oh, Trek incarnations. Yes, I have. Um, Next Generation, I believe I was in two... Well, I was in two episodes, yet I was cut out. Uh, I was in... What, what's the episode? I used to know the name. Where they go to the Pleasure Planet. Next Generation, Season 1. Uh, Wesley Crusher like catches a ball and breaks something and he has to be killed. Yeah. Um, and everyone's wearing skimpy clothing. I was like 14 or whatever at the time. And I was one of the little boys running around, but I think they cut me out. I'm a terrible actor. And then there was another scene on board the Enterprise where, uh, uh, what was Colomini? You know Colomini, what was his character's Chief name? Chief O'Brien. Chief O'Brien, his wife, the, the um, lovely Asian actress. Keiko. Keiko. She was a teacher in an episode, yeah. and they were in school. They cut to the scene, and it's the back of my head leaving the screen. So, 
I was in it. The back of my head is in Next Generation. Sci-fi. Oh yeah, I'm there. Awesome. Okay, um, somebody wants to know how many times your father tested the transporters on you before he got them right. Well, uh, we gotta think of a clever answer for this one. Uh, I, he, he still hasn't gotten it right. You can tell by my personality. <laughs> a few, a few of their, your, your atoms got mixed oh, in there. Oh yeah, oh yeah. Yeah, so there's something not right inside and we still haven't figured out what it was, but it was a transporter accident. Gotcha. <laughs> but, but not with anybody's prize beagles. That's right. Okay. Um, okay, somebody wants to know, does living in the future, even a variety of alternate futures, devalue the present? Wow. It's really deep. That's philosophical. Excellent. How much film do you have? <laughs> um, that's an excellent question. Does living right. in the future devalue the present? I'd love to know more about the question because if they're kind of suggesting people who like live in their imagination about the future, they're, they, they think about the future and don't really Forget focus on reality. Right. I would agree that that could devalue the present. It's great to think about the future, but you got to come back every now and then. That's the same thing with the internet, right? And, you know, spend all your time playing World of Warcraft. Yeah. You know, you should come back to reality every now and then and check in and maybe interact with people eye to eye. Um, I don't know if I can answer that question in a way that'll make that person happy. Well, how about you? Are you really good at living in the present, or do you tend to focus on this future that could be? I'm sometimes I'm quite a spaz. I uh, I you know. I take life for granted sometimes, and I, I don't stop and smell the roses, as cliche as it is, I, I, I kind of don't. You know, I, I'm not religious, I'm not spiritual, but when I'm scuba diving, um, that is my moment of zen, and that is when I'm present. When I'm underwater, when I'm floating, when I'm seeing this amazing life all around me, that's as spiritual as I get, and that's, that's my zen state. So, yes, that's when I'm present, mostly. It's great that you have that, that you can yeah. go back to. Well, I think people have their things, and, and that's definitely mine. i got to figure out how to be present up here. Yeah. Okay, Kirk or Picard? Picard. Oh. Yeah, I'm a Picard. Picard above all the other captains? Is he your number yes. one? Picard would be my number one. Yeah, Kirk, Kirk was too much of a cowboy. I, I'm, I, I've got more respect for Picard. I've got more admiration for Picard. I, you know what a better question is? Who would you follow? Oh, Kirk there you or go. Picard? And I would follow Picard. Uh, Kirk would probably get me killed and he'd take all the chicks away, which would kind of piss me off because he never shared that, did he? He did not. No, right, right. Spock had a little. He had a little action? But he, there, was, there was that hippie girl. Yeah, oh, the one on the planet. Yeah. Uh, the, 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 the rose, the flower. Well, and then uh, your mom, there's Chapel. She yes. had a little thing for him. Yes, yes, she did. Okay. Uh, somebody wants to know what your favorite Star Trek memory with your dad is. Oh, you mentioned it earlier. Oh, I sure did. Yeah, that's, that's definitely that. one I'm sure happy to, happy to. I, I uh, as a young boy, five, six, seven, something around that, my, my father had an office in, in our home, and in the, the bathroom of that office, he had a, a, like a, it's a white board on the wall, I mean, just like this big. And he had his uh, eight millimeter projector, and this was the projector that he literally carried around to conventions. He had the, the blooper reel on that projector and he would play it for me because it would make me giggle and laugh and this was before I, I really knew what Star Trek was I would just see all these people running and slipping and falling and, and uh, if you haven't seen the blooper reel you too you'll, you'll get it out there it's hilarious it's awesome so my friend gave me a burned copy of it for my birthday oh awesome good yeah. good good they have a few one few of them out there with uh, next generation too I don't know if you've seen those I haven't I've seen a lot of bloopers but I, ha I, I, don't, I haven't seen what you're talking about there's one that I just saw like a year ago for the first time, didn't know it existed. Uh, uh, Picard, uh, Patrick Stewart on the bridge of the Enterprise singing happy yes. birthday to my dad. Yes. I was blown away. I didn't, I didn't even know that existed. That's yeah. hilarious. That's great. Okay. So, you're kind of creating your own vision here. Yes. So somebody wants to know, if you're not a Trek fan, do you have your own ideas or stories that you want to share? Well, to, to kind of clarify, hey, look, your your Thor brethren. Hey. Where's your hammer? Where's your Thor. hammer? No hammer. All right. It's, a, it's, a, it's That's over, over there. there. Okay. I, I I am also Thor. <laughs> um, 
so so I, I, I'm not necessarily creating my own uh, a vision of the future. I, I'm really, I believe I'm, I'm going with my father's. I mean, my vision is my father's. Every time I, I think of something, you know, it really has to do with my father's philosophy. I mean, I, I believe in that future. I believe in my father's philosophy. So I've made it my own. So I'm not necessarily deviating and doing my own thing. Um, we're all different, so we have our own interpretations of it, but, you know, I, 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 I'm pretty much trying to carry on that vision in my own way. So as far as, uh, and they said, the question was if I'm not a Trek fan. I am a Trek fan. I'm absolutely a Trek fan. But um, I, I'm, I say I'm a Roddenberry fan because it's the philosophy in Trek that I'm a fan of. So uh, as far as science fiction, well, we, we've got these great properties. Uh, and, and we've got a number of more to go, but uh, my, my heart and passion is not in necessarily creating traditional entertainment, traditional sci-fi. Uh, I love new media. I'm trying to work with uh, some of the new media companies up there. I have tremendous respect and admiration for uh, Felicia Day and, and Will Wheaton and Geek and Sundry and what they're doing there. Um, I, I'm actually quite blown away. I, I, if I had an opportunity to work for Paramount, or CBS, or Universal, or any of these big companies, or Geek at Sundry, I would, without a doubt, go to them, even if there was no pay. Yeah. Because they enjoy what they do, they retain creative control. The, the hundreds of years of, of politics in Hollywood, or maybe not hundreds, but over a hundred years of politics in Hollywood, don't exist in these new media companies. So I'm, I would want to work with them, and that's who I hope to work with. Sorry, it's a very convoluted answer for an easy question. But a weirdly worded question. But, um, and weirdly worded answer, I think, on my part. I thought you answered it very well. Yes. Good job. Okay, sci-fi is taking on darker tones and being successful like Battlestar Galactica. Does Trek need who, to... Who Ron Montmore called the anti-Trek. Oh. And he's not anti-Trek, but he definitely wanted to do something different. Sorry to tell me. No, no, you're fine. Okay, so does Trek need to adopt this to stay afloat? Or how far from... Answer that question first. Yeah, no, absolutely not. Star Trek should never go dark. I mean, Deep Space Nine was as dark as, as Trek got, I think. And, and Enterprise actually had some darkness to it, absolutely. Uh, but as far as my father's intentions, the Trek that he believed in, it, it should never go down the dark road. And, I mean, the future of Star Trek was really his philosophy as well, because he wasn't a super religious No, not at all. Either, no, he was right? very much a humanist, as am I. Yeah. Excellent. Okay, how far from the optimistic view of humanity's future that Roddenberry had... Oh, that's part of his question. Never mind, we're going to get rid of that one. All right, fine. Okay. Um, somebody wants to know if there's any possibility of you ever teaming up with Joss Whedon and relaunching Firefly. <laughs> I, first of all, Joss Whedon's brilliant. Absolutely brilliant. Um, I, I hadn't seen Firefly until uh, I, I met my, my wife, uh, and then she said, you should watch this, and then I fell in love with it. Um, the, the short answer is no, because I'm not that talented, uh, but if Joss Whedon came up to me and said, hey, you know what, I, I want to do uh, uh, Firefly, the next generation, and I want you to work with me, I would jump at the chance to work with him, because he's also... Uh, fairly open-minded when it comes to new media. He, he can do traditional media, like the movies and stuff, but he's a big fan of, of new media and the independent producers as well, so he would be great to work with. I beg to differ on you not being good at this stuff. We just saw yeah. a preview. Not, not enough experience, let's put it that way. But, but this concept for a white room, which is this 360 degree, mm -hmm. where you can literally, you're watching it, you can move your, your iPad. Yeah, yeah. So it's, it's going to be online, right? Well, it's going to be online. It's going to, you're going to, there's going to be an app for that, to use that cliche term. Yeah, yeah. You move your iPad like this, and it literally it goes around the room. Yep, you'll be you able to, to follow it. Yeah, follow it. Follow it. Follow it around. The table. Yeah. Or you'll be able to go to a domed theater, and in that domed theater, it'll be projected in 360 degrees. So you'll be in the middle of the room, and the character behind you will talk, and then that character will talk, and the other one will put a gun out. And so, like, like the room at Disneyland. Remember yeah, they used yeah, to have that? Oh. Yeah, that's exactly what it will be. And you know, the, the ceiling too. The that's genius awesome. is yeah, is uh, Trevor, Tori, yeah. and Greg Aronowitz, and Kim Eby. I mean, there were so many people, but they are the ones who really birthed this idea, and uh, they deserve the credit. I'm the one who said, "Sounds good. Go for it." 
It really is spectacular. I, I, I can't wait to see the whole thing. So if you go to a dome theater, let me just ask this real quick. Yeah. Um, who, I, I mean, you, you can move the thing around. So if, um, so they just don't move anything. It just stays in one still shot. In the planet, in the planetarium, yeah. the dome theater, yeah, it's because it's projected up against the ceiling. So the camera's so in the middle the of the table, and you've got the, all the characters here, and they're just interacting. So you're watching them talk to each other and move around. So is there, does that mean there's like two versions of the film, one you can move around and one you can't? It, it's crazy. They had to shoot it twice. Wow. They had to shoot it twice because they had to do the traditional camera where they close up, sit out, and in. But then they just had to put the camera in the center of the table get everyone out of the room and have the actors act. It's really cool. Some parts of the set are from Blade Runner. Yeah. Greg's Real amazing. Steel. Yeah, Greg's right. amazing. Great Real Steel. Like, what else did he say? Well, I don't know, but he's, he's amazing. Yeah. We'll find out later. Okay, let's see what else we got. Okay, which aspect of your father's vision of the future inspires you the most? And which ones have you tried to implement? Uh, great question. I have perfect answer, uh, my perfect answer, um, is uh, IDIC, Infinite okay. Diversity and Infinite Combinations. For those who don't know, that was sort of a, 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 a Star Trek backbone, as far as I'm concerned. Um, it's like a Vulcan. It, it's, it's Vulcan, but it's, it's very uh, Roddenberry and Starfleet, very Gene Roddenberry. Um, it, in the future, not only are we not afraid of, of things that are different, not only have we embraced the different ethnicities, the different religions on our planet, but we are now realizing in that future that it is the diversity, it's the things that are different that, that make life worth living, that help uh, uh, grow us as a species. So that's the backbone of Star Trek. That's why we're in a starship exploring space, because we're looking for things that are different. And it's not just the physicality. More importantly, it's different ideas. Because when you're able to put your emotions aside, and have a conversation with someone who may have an opposing point of view, and you be able to be objective and listen to that, that's how you'll grow, because maybe something they say will help evolve your thinking. And it makes us stronger. It makes, exactly, exactly. So that, that is my favorite part of, of my father's creation. And I, I think that's the takeaway message for Star Trek, for, for everyone. Easier said than done. I, I, I don't want to preach there. it. Yeah, I want to. Yeah, I try. <laughs> I try. I don't do it all the time, but I try. Okay, let's see. What do you think about um, the unofficial fan flicks and Star Trek movies that pop up every once in a while? I love them. I think they're great. I I, I think there should be a, a Star Trek fan film festival. There should definitely be a sci-fi fan film festival. But uh, the the amount of technology, innovation, creativity. Uh, that is out there right now. The fact that people can shoot pretty darn high quality short films or episodes of Star Trek. Um, I love that idea. I love that, and I love the idea more that they can shoot it for one tenth or even one fiftieth the cost of what the big studios do. Because again, they've got so much red tape, so much overhead that they're, they're, it's costing them two, three, four million dollars an episode. And these other people who have a passion are doing it for fifty thousand, a hundred thousand. So that's just amazing. Two hundred dollars. Yeah. Well, right. Some are doing it for about two hundred dollars. So. Okay. Let's see. So keep doing it. Who's ever doing it out there, keep doing it. I can't officially give you permission to, but keep doing it. And I won't tell you. Okay. Is there any technology from any of the Trek TV shows or films? that has not been made a reality that you would like to see made into a reality? Uh, people say the communicator is your cell phone, but to be honest, the communicator had way better reception than my cell phone. So I, I don't know if I'd buy that yet. Um, well, uh, you're familiar with the XPRIZE, are you not? Is anyone? Yes, yes. Yes, yeah. XPRIZE? That is an amazing organization and someone that we're currently exploring a relationship with in terms of the foundation. They're trying to do a universal translator. Well, that, I haven't even heard of that. Oh, yeah. Oh, my God, I haven't even heard of that. Um, but they're doing the Tricorder X Prize. Uh, they announced that last CES, and Qualcomm has put up a $10 million prize for them to create a handheld device or a mobile device that can uh, be taken to third world countries, can be given to people at home, that can diagnose ailments. Uh, I'm not just talking cold or flu, but can 
you know, uh, go through the skin and test for blood and test for diseases and test for these things. So it, the, the idea is there's there's so many places around the world that don't have access to healthcare that if you can make a device that can really help people in this area, uh, people will be able to find their issues quicker and be able to solve them and find treatment. So I, I'm really excited that the, the Tricorder X Prize is, is going to revolutionize the healthcare industry. It works kind of side by side with your stem cell. Yeah, it, it's, it definitely does. It definitely does. Right. Personally, I can't wait for the replicator because I can't cook. <laughs> All right, so I'm with you. I'm with you, and you know, you know, the replicator, the birth has it's already happened. 3D printing oh, that's right. is the beginning yeah. of the replicator. That's right. You know, because right now they're they're doing resins. They can do glass. I've seen it in action. They can do steel. You've seen it? Yes. Yeah. Oh my God, I worked amazing. for an architecture firm in Los Angeles, and we actually got a 3D printer. Isn't it amazing? Yeah. Oh my God. It, you know, we're we're no longer going to be like uh, buying things on Amazon anymore. We're all going to have 3D printers at home. And we're going to order our, our dish set or, or whatever the case is, and, and we're going to hit a button and it's going to print out at home. And they're doing it with, uh, they're, they're actually doing it medically now. They can print out uh, uh, tissues, glass, steel, they print wood. Yeah. Now, when they get down to the atomic size, they'll be able to make food, and you'll have the food replicator. I, I heard about one that somebody was trying to invent that was uh, some kind of thing that they insert into your eye. And you can see like a projection in front of you. Yeah, I heard about that too. Yeah, yeah. That I don't makes know how me that think of the TNG episode, the game where everybody was brainwashed. Oh, I don't remember that. Remember one. that? No. no and no. Uh, Wesley and Robin Leffler had to had to save everybody. No, I don't remember that one. Yeah. Right. That was. I'll, I'll watch. It. I'll watch it on the new uh, remastered Blu-rays that are coming hey. out. Hey. <laughs> well, that's all the questions. So. That's it. That's do you want me to ask more? No, no. People are going to get bored of this. <laughs> so they're like, all right, we've heard them talk enough. They, they want to probably hear you talk. So. Um, but thank you so much. Oh, my pleasure. It's a pleasure to meet you again. Oh, thank you for the opportunity. And to those of you who I didn't answer the question well enough, my apologies. Uh, but uh, keep asking, and I'll be happy to answer them again another time. Email them to me. I'll email them to you. Well, thank you. Thank you very much. Did you have that sneak Yes. Oh, yes. Yeah. Um, sorry, I'm trying to figure out the best way. Well, let me tell you what it is first, and you tell me, because it's we're, we, uh, we're starting our own podcast, and I, I've had this, uh, a dream is too strong of a word, but I've been wanting to for a long time do a podcast that uh, episode by episode, in air order, um, examines the, the ethics, the philosophy, the moral statements in that episode with a uh, 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 sort of an intellectual yet uh, humorous tone. So we've got uh, five podcasts that are already in the can. We haven't released them yet. Um, but I, I think the fans are really going to enjoy this because we've got two tremendous hosts uh, uh, who, who are doing this. Uh, John Champion from DVD Geeks and Ken Ray from Mac OS Ken. And they are, they are Star Trek fans, but they really are sort of, they come at it from two different directions. And they say, you know, this was the message in the show, or did it have a message? Does this mass message still stand the test of time? So we're going to be releasing those at the uh, Las Vegas convention in Star Trek, uh, in uh, uh, September, in August, next month. We're going to be releasing uh, the podcast. So, wow. yeah, it's called Mission Log. Mission Log. Yes. So. I, I, I participate in a, a podcast as well. It's, it's oh. actually it's it's world's best podcast. But they um, they've started a little a little sub podcast called Ten Forward. Oh really? Yeah. So I really? participated in both of those discussions because I'm I'm kind of like the resident Trekkie. Oh, I've got to hear those. Yeah. I'll, so. I'll, I'll download them. Yeah. Awesome. There's so much fun, and we've, we've started kind of delving into all that stuff, but we've, we've kind of done a broader overall, like, you know, comparing captains, comparing TV shows, stuff like that, but the goal it eventually is to kind of explore each show and, awesome. and the messages awesome. in there. Good, so, good. Well, we'll both explore it. We will. Perfect. Perfect. And are you participating in the podcast? Every now and then I'll, I'll chime in. I'm, I'm, I'm doing more producer things. I'm, I'm watching each episode and sharing what I think are some of the key points that should be discussed. Uh, I, I haven't actually been on the episodes yet because you get too many people on a podcast and it's too hard to know who's talking and stuff. So I, I'm not necessarily the one that needs to be in front of the camera. I've done the documentary. I did my camera stuff. 
happy to be behind the scenes and push everything else forward. So, so no more plans to be in front of the camera? No. I, no. no. Only in interviews like this. Okay. Unless you do one about your mom. Unless I do one about my mom. <laughs> that would be a tricky documentary. That would be a special documentary. If you need any help, just let me know. I'll be happy to help you. <laughs> thank you. And thank you so much. Absolutely. Thank you. Good to see you again. Awesome. Bye, guys. <laughs>